there's many heroes out there that do have bionic limbs or disabilities. Typically, they are villains because of the stereotype of disabled characters being villains. Or there are high-tech characters like Nebula, who I'm cosplaying right now, that have high-tech limbs or are cyborgs. I lost my hand to sepsis when I was an infant. Growing up, I never really saw characters like me. I really like taking parts of what makes me me and adding it to the characters I love. It makes me feel very strong and I feel like it's always a statement piece. I've wanted to do this my entire life, ever since I was seven years old, to build bionic limbs. Uh, my parents are from Pakistan, and I was visiting when I was seven, and that's the first time I met someone missing a limb, and she was my age, missing her right leg and using a tree branch as a crutch living in the streets. And that's what inspired me to go into this field. It works off of the muscles that are still left in your arm, right? So if you were missing your arm over here, you still have muscles that are in your forearm that control a, a hand. We can tap into those muscles and then use those to actually control the different movements on the hand itself. The electrodes, which look something like this, are what is pressed up against my skin, embedded in the socket on each side, and those are what reads um, my muscle contractions. I'm contracting like the end of my muscle, my, the end of my arm on this side of my arm to close okay. it, okay. and then I'm contracting the muscle out here to open the hand. The muscle sensing technology had been around for a while, but it, was, it, wasn't just, it wasn't very accessible and it hadn't been applied to 3D printed prosthetics before. We were combining all those technologies together and building our own devices that could use those technologies. Mark IV was also the first one that we were incorporating touch feedback. So we put pressure sensors into the, the finger. This allows our users to actually feel what they're manipulating, what they're grabbing. You know, saying that I have feeling again would be misleading. It's not like that at all. If anything, I like to describe it like it's like added reassurance. Grabbing my coffee in the morning, heavy glass of coffee, you know, it's, it's hot, whatever. I get that feedback that I'm holding it, and I've noticed that I, I stopped like staring at my hand when I'm going to pick up a cup of coffee. I get that little vibration that I'm holding it, and I'm not staring at my hand to make sure, which is something that I always used to do. Um, we're working on integrating this hand directly to your bones and your nerves. So with the nerve implant technology, this is what you'd be able to, to do, right? So I can control each hand independently and very fluidly, right? So the idea here is that um, instead of using the camera, you'd use nerve implants. And with that, we're hoping that within a, in a couple of years, we might get our first patients to play piano or type on a keyboard again. Individual finger control would be awesome. And then soon we'll, we'll know if somebody like me, somebody that's congenital, if it would be useful for me, if it would be possible. So in addition to humans using our hand, so if you're building a robot to do the same thing that humans are, then you can use our hand for robots as well. And so NASA is building a humanoid astronaut that they eventually want to send into space, and they were looking for a hand that they could use, so they contacted us and to see if we could actually fit our hand on their robot. And in this picture, you can actually see their humanoid astronaut robot, Valkyrie, using our hand, and Ani is actually fist bumping using the exact same hand that the robot is using.